Now, Echeverry and I have had a, a chequered history. It was not a genus that I was particularly interested in. I've always been more interested in the Liliaceae, in Aloes, Hawortheus, Gasterias, and that kind of uh, South African grouping. And I think my prejudice against Echeverias really came from the fact that I perceived them as being very common. I saw them planted out in municipal parks, in mass plantings, and in sale in uh, garages, forecourts, and uh, supermarkets. So I kind of have, um, ignored them. And then recently, about a year and a half ago, I became quite interested in the genus Adramiscus, which is a South African member of the family Crassulaceae. And that interest in Adramiscus extended towards a more general interest in South African Crassulas, and then by extension the American representatives of the Crassula family. The large overarching grouping including Echeverias, Dudleias, Graptopetalum, Tacitus also included in Graptopetalum, uh, Sedeveria, some smaller growing sedums and that general Rosetti form mix. So Echeverias are native to northern Central America, Mexico and the southwestern United States. So quite a broad geographical span, much wider than, for example, Hawarthias in South Africa. But with Hawarthias, Echeverias share a number of similarities, and in many ways there are convergent examples of individuals where the Echeverias in America, or in the Americas, have taken the ecological niches that members of the Liliaceae have taken in Africa. So, for example, uh, we have um, hairy Echeverias, like this Echeveria bombacina, and then we have hairy Hawarthias, like this Hawarthia venosta. They grow to about the same size, about three and a half inches. They grow to about the same height above the ground, about an inch to an inch and a half. They are, to all intents and purposes, playing the same role. Now Echeverias form part of a much wider Crassula group, including the close relatives that I've just mentioned, including Pachyphytum, Dudleia, and, and that ilk of similar Echeveria plants, and I'll come back to that point very, very soon. They also, of course, take a, a botanical relationship to a much wider geographical um, form with the inclusion of Madagascan, African and Asian plants like um, Kalankoe, like this Kalankoe tomentosa, and with uh, several other similar groups in other parts of the world, like the Ionium and Grenovias from the Canary Islands, like this Grenovia diotrantalis, which is now Ionium diotrantalis. So there are many, many widespread representatives of the Crassula family. But for the purposes of this first series of videos, we will be looking at the Echeverias in the purest sense. But very briefly, because we will be coming back to these points later on, there is something problematical about the definition of the word Echeveria in terms of botany. Because with the advent of genetic research and scanning electron microscopes and men in white coats making decisions about the names of plants, Echeveria has been designated a polyphyletic group. What? The genus Echeveria has been designated a polyphyletic group, which means that there is no common ancestor to Echeveria. So what? So what says you? Okay. Let's wind back very, very quickly. My name is Arthur Dixon. Now just imagine my name was Dixon Arthur. Dixon would be the genus name. Arthur would be the species name. And theoretically, if you checked all the Dixon's ancestry back in time, there would be one person called Dixon, or one relationship called Dixon, from whom all the Dixons were descended. Yeah? Makes sense? Ish? Kind of? Right. In Echeveria, 
There is no common ancestor. There are probably about four or five different genetic strains within what we understand to be the overarching Echeveria grouping. And within that, there is a group of Echeverias which are actually quite close to Pachyphytum. Well, for example, if we look at this lovely white thick-leaved Echeveria lauii, it looks quite similar to this lo lovely white thick-leaved Pachyphytum. And in fact, the Pachyphytum is much closer to about nine or ten species of Echeverias than those Echeverias are to other Echeverias. In the same way there are some Echeverias which are very close in relationship to a genus called Sediveria. And within the Sediveria and that section of the Echeveria they're very close, not surprisingly, to the genus Sedum. So at some point in time the genus Echeveria will have to be split in exactly the same way as Hawarthi was split into Tulista and into Hawarthiopsis. Echeveria will have to be split into that group of Echeverias which are closest to Graptopetalum, that group of Echeverias which is closest to uh, Dudleia, that group of Echeverias which is closest to Sedum, and that group of Echeverias which is closest to Pachyphytum. It's an artificial genus of plants which look very similar but are in fact not that closely related. So there we are. So in South Africa we have wonderful plants like Adramiscus, like this Adramiscus trigynus and in other parts of the world we have other members of the Crassula family but the dominant representative of the Crassulaceae in Central America, in Mexico and in the southern southwest of the United States is the genus Echeveria. Widespread, many many species but to rehash that group will have to be subdivided. But it's a wonderful group. Let's just look at some of the convergence ideas here. So we've got this Echeveria hybrid, Ava, which is green, light green, and the leaves have bristles all along the leaf margins. We also have a Hawarthia, like this Hawarthia blackbeardiana from Kachkart in South Africa, which is very light green and has bristles all down the leaf margins. You get my point? Echeverias and Hawarthias are taking each other's role in the same way that agaves in America are the American aloes, aloes in Africa are the African agaves, euphorbias are the African cacti, didieria and alodia are the Madagascan cacti, there are parallels between botanical groupings all around the world. But for now, this is a very brief introduction to a wonderful genus of Northern American succulent plants, the genus Echeveria. Now, on each of the videos, I'll be coming back to do a further expansion of this, but that's a very quick, very broad introduction to the Echeveria plant habit. Low-growing, succulent, small, offsetting, very attractive flowers. Native to, last time, Northern Central America, throughout Mexico and the Southwestern United States. Great group, great plants. I hope you enjoy the series. Bye for now, bye bye. Five minutes later, uh, five absolutely superb plants. I'll just uh, 
skate over this 4K Rio Britannia because it will be covered in much more depth in uh, in another video on various of our of our social media, but not particularly devoted to um, Echeverria's or the Crassulaceae in general. So it's a lovely plant, but we're going to move swiftly on, and we've got this very very dark Echeveria affinis. I mean, it's um. Those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, the videos that we make here at Kirkstone, will know that I have an absolute fascination for convergent evolution, how plants from completely different um, biological groups, uh, taxonomically distinct and separate, and often geographically very distinct as well, can look almost exactly the same. They've come to converge because the ecological conditions in which they grow are identical, Therefore, the plants have evolved to fulfill an identical function, even if they're not related. So, uh, um, a dicotyledon like an Areocarpus, like uh, Areocarpus um, scaphorostris, or Retusus longituberosus, or indeed Trigonus, will look amazingly like this plant, which also looks morphologically amazingly like both. Uh, Hawarthia, Hawartheopsis limifolia umboensis, and also like um, uh, Tulistas, Tulista, uh, various of the tub tubercle, less Tulistas, the plain ones like uh, Marginata. So that's an amazingly uh, coloured plant with a purple on the outside, though it's a bit dusty now, it needs a good clean. A dark purple on the outside and that very, very dark green in the centre. So that's Echeveria affinis. And then I should have I should have gone here first, really, and kept the Echeverias together. So this is a typical thick-leaved Pachyphytum. Okay, so this little particular one is Pachyphytum uh, bracteosum. And then we had that uh, large and uh, very impressive Echeveria mexicana. Very, very nice plant indeed. And then the uh, Pièce de Résistance, that particular cultivar of Echeveria Chaviana, which has always been one of the most spectacular Echeverias, of course. And this is Echeveria Curly Pearl. And it really is an absolutely stunning plant. About five and a half inches across, nice and flat, absolutely amazing. Love it to bits. Echeveria number three, Echeveria number two, Echeveria number one, Pachyphytum number one. And that lone stray member of the Phycoid tribe of the Isoaceae, Forcaria Britanniae. Another lovely, lovely plant. Okay. <music>